Henry, with your presentation. So now, let's go on uh, with uh, the agenda of LACNAG. Alberto Moran will tell, talk about VXLAN on IPv6 only. Good afternoon. I'm uh, Alberto Moran. Let me start by thanking LACNIC, LACNOG, and the organizers uh, for having considered my presentation. This is a protocol that I've been studying, and I thought it would be important at least to present it. And so here we are. I had updated this presentation, but it's okay. So what is uh, VLAN? We were going to compare VLAN and VXLAN, see the header issues and technologies, technology issues. And at the end, there was a demo. In this case, you're only going to see the screens because of the connection to the server where the network was uh, simulated. So what is VXLAN? It's uh, encapsulating protocol that tries to virtualize the networks on physical networks, networks that are already implementing, that are already operating in data centers, in service providers, and in a way, this VXLAN solution uh, helps us virtualize um, so that we can present solutions to clients on a network that is already established, it's already ru running. In the end, these are tunnels that will operate in an IP-based uh, network, routed, and to make uh, the tr certain traffic. It's uh, layer two tunnels that we're going to run. So here we have the issues of uh, the VTEPs, the virtual terminal endpoints. That's where we are going to um, upload the traffic that we are going to route or take to another destination. Now, the specific thing here is VLAN. The VLAN tries to cover limitations presented by VLANs at the level of service providers or data centers. Personally, this is the issue of the VLAN ID because we can have those identifiers in the world of those service providers, the data centers where with a, a, a large number of clients, we need more identifiers to, in a way, segment the network and to identify certain traffic. And there, we are running short with the traditional VLAN. So, uh, VXLAN is a protocol for encapsulating encapsulation that is based on an IP network, layer three. So in the end, it covers those constraints of the VLANs because it makes it possible to isolate at the level of layer two, since in layer three, it doesn't have a complete isolation because we need Fil uh, traffic filtration mechanisms if we are to do that, so to prevent them from in interrelating. So because the two are compatible with uh, the internet because you need NAT and other mechanisms for translation. And in a way, v VXLAN does that. It tries to cover those limitations where we have identifiers. Now we have a 64 bits to be able to identify, to map, and isolate network of service traffics on um, of more for more clients. And the header of a VXLAN, you add the 64 bits. We have eight bits initially. The four four first ones are reserved, they're always going to be zero. Then we have the fifth bit that will indicate whether it's unicast or multicast traffic. When we have, when it's a one, that means that's unicast. And when it's zero, it's multicast. The remaining bits are reserved. So you need to use zeros. 
Then you have 24 bits that are reserved, that are not used, but must be mapped in zero. And then we have 24 additional bits for the VXLAN identifiers as such. And the remaining bits are reserved. And the interesting thing here is encapsulation. So in the, tra the traffic of VXLAN goes encapsulated in layer 4 and uses the port of 4789. And the rest is the same uh, coming from layer 2 upwards. What are the advantages of the VXLAN? Scaling up, resilience some uh, the uh, cost may be an advantage it enables us to have multi tenant uh, a multi tenant network in a way multi users or a multiple domains that we could give to segment to the clients or to isolate them if they don't share the domains of the traffic among users, because in the end, this is what we can offer with these solutions. And here, other technologies implementing them. We need multiple protocols, in this case, PIM, for establishing, for to be able to put uh, the uh, uh, default gateway uh, replications to the different VTEP to establish the uh, uh, tunnels. In the endpoint, uh, uh, and here we see how it goes encapsulated on the protocol um, port uh, um, 4789. And here you have the VXLAN identifier, and you have the information that is encapsulated, in this case, the, MAC ad the layer 2 MAC address. And here we see the importance of the multi uh, protocol, uh, uh, multi port. Um, the BGP with the EVPN, that is, in theory, the cornerstone of this. It enables us to raise those network uh, uh, informations and to take them from one end to the other. So here we have VPN. And here we have a test an end-to-end -end connectivity test. Of course, as it's VXLAN, we try to optimize this in the uh, network of a service provider or in a data center that is all IPv6 uh, based at the end of the VLAN. We could determine traffic uh, that is also IPv6 or IPv4 traffic. In this case, there's a connectivity test. It's uh, based on IPv4, but it's the VLAN that is uh, so the service is put in a mod, uh, protocol VGP and it goes. Um, you see that it is encapsulated on VXLAN, and there you have the MAC addresses. And at the end, the encapsulation goes to the IPs of origin and destination. So here you see another test on ICMP version 6 on IPv6, and here is the same, encapsulating on UDP. We see the traffic of the VXLAN, its identifier, and all the IPv6 addresses, origin and destination. Here we have the demo. We saw it already in the previous screens. We had uh, more slides, uh, but uh, OK, this is what I wanted to share with you. I don't know whether you have any questions or doubts. Thank <laughs> you.
All right, if there are no questions, a big round of applause. I think that this is quite an interesting topic and it's quite new in our community. I hope you um, make the most of the fact that Alberto is here and you can uh, contact him. Today was a long and busy day, quite long. I think that it's been very interesting. There were very good presentations. And with this, we will close the second day of LACNIC tomorrow. Tomorrow morning, we'll go on. We have four presentations, the four final presentations of LACNOC from 9 to 11 a.m., essentially focusing cybersecurity. I hope you like it. So I think that we can call it a day. Those of you who registered for beer and gear of LAC IXA, uh, please be here at 6.30. Uh, and if you uh, couldn't register,